This is AFP Internet Core MVC. Learn and practice course. Today in this lesson, we will work with the form in AFP Internet Core MVC. Okay, let's get started. Open Visual Studio and open the project we are working on. Open Solution 8 Browser. And then before I start working with the form, let me run this website first. This is the home page. And so now I will create a new contact page on the menu. And then when the user navigates to the contact page, we will have a form which allows the user to submit the data to the server. Okay, let me show you the demonstration how to create a form in the ASP.NET Core MVC and then we submit the data from the client side to the server side. And firstly, let me open the layout. In the layout, I will create a new menu here. I will have the action will be the contact. Contact and then open the home controller. Scroll it down. And here I have to create a I action result for the contact public. Return view contact. The name here for in the controller will be the same in the ASP minus action contact here. Let's come back to the browser and then refresh the page. You take a look into the menu. The new contact has been added into the navigation. Let's go ahead to click on the contact menu here. It will navigate you to the contact page by default it would be this by error message because for now we don't have the view for contact page that means we have to create the contact.cshtml in the solution and before adding the contact.cshtml file into our project show we should identify how many property we should have in for the contact form. That means for now, I need to define a model data for contact first. And then when after we define the data model for the contact, we will continue to create a new view for the contact page. Back to Visual Studio. And we have the model folder. I will go ahead to create a contact class inside the model folder here. Just go ahead to right click on the model and click on add button. Select a class option. I will name this one in the contact. I will go ahead to create some property for the contact form. I will have public string name. I will try to add a, an ID here, public integer ID. Okay. And then let me, me try to build this one first. Right click on the project and then click on build. Okay. So now, after we finish creating a contact model for the contact page, so I will go ahead to create a a contact not see at HTML file. You take a look into the view folder. Inside the view folder, we have home folder. So now I will go ahead to create contact not see at HTML inside the home folder. Right click on the home folder and select add option. Click on the view. And then I will select the razor view. Click on add button. 
the at razor view dialog will be appear. So now I will provide the name for the view. It should be the contact for the template. Click on the arrow down button here to open the list of the template. I will select a template create because for now I want to create a form. So I will reuse the template it create to have some form generated by the Visual Studio from the template for the model, model class. Click on the arrow down button. And then you see here we have the contact. Contact here. Select select this one, model collab, and then click for the layout page. Just go ahead to select this one and then you click on the three dots button. Go to the view, set photo, and select a layout. Yeah, because I want to reuse some of the stylists from this layout. Yeah. And in the previous time we already added the contact menus on the navigation. So we should reuse the style sheet from the layout master here. Click on button, And you see here, we have the contact .cs.html file had been created inside the home folder. Okay. And based on the contact model, it will also generate the, the form here for me. We have ID, name, email, phone, address, and note. We also have a submit button to submit the data to the server side. Scroll it to the top. We have a form ASP action, the contact. So when we click on a submit button, it will submit the data via a port method. So we need to have a port method in the controller to handle the port action. Let me come back to the home controller. I will copy this one. And then it will be the HTTP port. And you see here, we have an error message. And because the name here is duplicated, Let's come back to the contact view first. And here, because we allow the user to enter the content, I mean the data into the form. So when the user click on submit button, it will submit all of the data entered by the user to the server. That means in the home controller, we have to receive the data from the user. That means we need to have a parameter here to receive the data. I will have the contact, contact, and form data. Okay. And return to the view. So here, in this of return the, to the view, I will return some the return the JSON data for testing purpose. Back to the contact. So now let me come back to the browser and refresh this page. And you see that on this page we have some the property here: ID, name, email, phone, address, and note. Just go ahead to click on create button to submit the form. And then after we submit the form data to the server, it will return the data in JSON format because we left the form in blank. So everything will be in noon value. Let me come back to the form and then I will try to enter some data here. The first one, the ID, it should be one and name it will be Tien Viet. Phone address with um, setting. And then 
after we fill in all of the data into the form, we click on the create button. Yeah. And then you see the JSON data written here with the data entered by the user. So now come back to the Visual Studio and we take a look more detail in the form. So here, first one, we have the form. We'll be sending the data over the port method. And with action, it contact. That's why we need to have a contact here in the controller. So make one. This is some the label, label for the ID. And then we have the input, input. This will be a take box span. Span, this one, the AP validation. That means when we left, the text box is blank, so we should display the validation message. I will talk about this one in the next lesson. Okay, the same thing here for as a group form, we have the label for name and a text box for name. The same thing for other element in the form, email, phone, address, note, form group, submit. Okay, so they have some time for break. And we will continue to work with the form in the next lesson for the validation message. Bye-bye.